welcome back uh, to the second lecture on blockchain architecture design and use cases. So, in this particular lecture, we will look into the historical perspective of blockchain and uh, how this concept of blockchain evolved over time and utilized into different uh, applications. So, a basic uh, fundamental which is very useful in the context of blockchain. So, the concept is uh, cryptographically uh, secured hash function. So, a hash function uh, is a function that map any size data to a fixed size. So, for example, if we define a hash function like h x x modulo n, where x and n are integers and uh, this uh, modulo is the modular operation that means reminder after division by n. Uh, so, if we define a hash function like this way, that means in this case you can see that uh, whatever be the value of x, the value of h x will be in between 0 and n minus 1. So, this type of functions we call it a kind of hash function. Now, one advantage of these hash functions are that we call them their uh, one way function that means given a x and n you can compute h x, but if h x is given then uh, you cannot say that what is the corresponding value of x, you cannot say it uniquely. Uh, so, that is the property of a hash function and this concept of hash function is widely used in the concept of blockchain or indeed uh, blockchain is nothing but uh, uh, an uh, data structure which is uh, built upon this concept of hash function. Now, this hash function concept of hash function is used widely uh, in uh, cryptographic context and then we call this kind of hash function as cryptographically secured hash function. Now, the properties of this cryptographically secured hash function is that first the function is one way that means given a x you can compute h x, but given a h x you cannot compute x with any deterministic algorithm. And the second property is that for any two different x 1 and x 2, uh, this h of x 1 and h of x 2 should be different. That means, if x 1 equal to x 2, then you should have h of x 1 equal to h of x 2 for two different uh, data set. But if x 1 not equal to x 2, then h of x 1 should not be equal to h of x 2. So, this kind of hash function we call it as cryptographically uh, secured hash functions. Now, this kind of cryptographically secured hash function, they have another important property which is called avalanche effect. So, what is an avalanche effect? So, avalanche effect is something like this. So, whenever we are defining a cryptographically secured hash function or sometimes we call it as cryptographic hash function. So, this uh, x is called a message and h x is called a message digest. And an example of cryptographically secured hash function is MD5 or ACHA 256. In uh, next week class, we will discuss about the details of this MD5 and ACHA 256, uh, the algorithms behind them. Uh, but the avalanche property of this um, cryptographically secured hash function or cryptography hash function is as follows. Say, given an input whenever you are computing the digest, if you make some little change in the input, uh, you will see a significant change in the digest. So, for example, whenever the input is fox, this is the digest. Whenever you make the input as the red fox jumps over the blue dog, uh, you get this one as the digest. Now, from here to here, you make a small change that the earlier one was that the red fox jumps over the blue dog. Now, you make it the red fox jumps o u r the blue dog. That means, uh, from over you are making a change at o u u e r. Then you can see that there is a significant change between the message digest. So, the message digest are completely different. By looking into this message digest, you cannot say that the original input was similar. Then from o u e r, you, if you make it o e v r, you will see a completely different match message digest. Again by looking into these three message digest, you will not be able to say that the original input text was same. Similarly, OB, OEVR, if you make it OER, again a completely different message digest. So, this particular effect in cryptographically secured hash function, it is known as avalanche effect. And the avalanche effect ensures that just by looking into the digest, it is nearly impossible to guess 
what was the input or even it is nearly impossible to guess that whether uh, two inputs were similar by ju just by looking uh, whether two digests are similar or not. So, that is an important aspect for the blockchain context, I will discuss why that is so. Okay. So, let us now go back a little bit about history that uh, uh, the use of this kind of cryptographically secured hash function in chains or blocks from where the concept of blockchain gradually evolved. So, the first use of this uh, concept of cryptographically secured chain or blocks, it came uh, uh, in 1991 uh, in a paper by Harbar and Stronetta. So, they have developed an mechanism for timestamping a digital document. So, you have a digital document and that document is edited by multiple uh, multiple people's time to time. So, one person has first created the document, then person two has edited the document, then person three has edited the document and you want to maintain a list of timestamp when the document has been first created followed by when the document was edited in a subsequent way, but in a secure way. So, such that no people will be able to make a change in the timestamp value and that is important from the document purpose because many of the time you want to see when the document was last edited or if some people claim that uh, I have not make any editing in the document, you want to see that whether that person has actually make an edit, uh, editing in the document or not. So, to solve this particular problem, uh, Harbor and Stonetta, they have used this concept of chain of blocks, they have not termed this as a blockchain, but the concept is similar to blockchain. So, what they did? So, they have taken a parameters like uh, the uh, initial uh, number, the initial uh, say in what uh, order the people have accessed. So, it has started from 0, 1, 2, 3, then, uh, uh, then a corresponding uh, change value, uh, the construct. So, the uh, block is something like that, that whenever a client access a document, you construct a block like this, which contains the sequence number, sequence number of access this C1, C2, C3, C4 at the client ID who have accessed the block, then uh, the corresponding timestamp value, the timestamp value and the hash value from the previous request. So, this is important. So, initially you have some hash value 80 and whenever uh, uh, you are you are uh, having this block information, you have this information, you make a hash of this entire information and get this value H1. Now, this value of H1 will be used in the next uh, uh, case. So, when the uh, client 2 will access or make an editing in that document. Then again by taking these values that means the, um, the sequence number, the client who has made the editing, the timestamp and the hash value of the previous one, you again generate a hash value which is H2 and this H2 will be uh, used in the next iteration when client 3 will access the document or make an editing in the document. Then from here you generate H3 and this H3 will be used when uh, client 4 will make some editing in the document. Now, in uh, the advantage of this hash chain is that if you want to make some change in the timestamp value. So, for example, if you want to make a change in timestamp 1, that means you have to change the value of H2, H3, H4, all the subsequent hash values and people will be able to observe that all these values have been changed. So, for example, client 2 will be able to change that, that his hash values has been changed and that way they will be able to detect that someone is trying to um, uh, tampering the document or tampering the timestamp value which is there. So, that way this uh, concept of uh, uh, this concept of chain of blocks by uh, connecting them by the hash function that was used to cryptographically uh, securing the timestamp value of a digital document. So, this particular architecture looks like something similar to blockchain where you have multiple blocks of data and these blocks of data are connected by a hash value. So, here uh, this uh, second block it is connected with the first block by this H1, then block 2 uh, it is connected with block 1 by this hash value, then block 3 it is connected to it uh, block 4 it is connected to it block 3 by this hash value. So, that way this individual hash values are helping to connect the blocks one after another and making the blocks as tamper proof. So, that was the first use of this concept of chain of blocks which was an earlier version of blockchain in um, uh, securing 
this uh, digital document. Now, the next concept, uh, another concept which is widely used or which uh, worked as the foundation for uh, blockchain concept, it is called a Merkley tree. So, what is a Merkley tree? Let me explain it uh, with this example. So, Merkley tree is a tree structure where the leaf nodes, they will contain the hash of the document and every individual, uh, individual node or the intermediate node, they will contain the hash of the combination of the left, uh, uh, left child and the right child. So, this is an example of a Merkley tree. So, the leaf node, it contains the hash of the content of this document. So, this leaf node contains the hash of D1, this leaf node contains the hash of D2, this leaf node contains the hash of D3, this leaf node contains the hash of D4 and then this uh, level 1, the intermediate node it contains the hash of this uh, uh, 800 that means the hash value of D1 plus the hash value of D, uh, D2 and, the, and their combined hash value. Then at root level, so this is an example of a binary Merkley tree. In root level, the root contains the combined hash of its left child and the right child. That means if you are making any change in this document, that change will get reflected in this hash value, this hash value as well as this hash value. Now, if you want to secure a number of document together, so here assume that you want to secure all these four documents together, then you have the advantage that uh, you can just propagate this root value. So, the root value, if there is any change in any one of these four documents, then that change will get reflected in the root value. And that way, um, that way you have the advantage that you can collectively secure a number of documents together by using this concept of Merkley tree. Now, this concept of Merkley tree was actually used in 1992 by extending the work where uh, the earlier people in 1991, they have developed a chain kind of architecture to secure the timestamp values in a digital document and they are here in 1992. Bear, Harbor and Stonetra, they have developed a mechanism where they have used a Merkley tree to secure the timestamp values for a number of documents, for a set of documents. Now, there can be other uses of Merkley tree like in a peer to peer network, whenever you are uh, sharing a set of data blocks, uh, you want to ensure that the data blocks are received in an unmanaged and unaltered way. Uh, so, and other peers, they are not lying about a block, like they are sharing a block but that block is not an updated block. So, in that case, if you share the uh, root hash of the Merkley tree, which we call as the Merkley root, if you share the Merkley root, the Merkley root ensures that none of the document has been altered. Another useful of the Merkley tree is the implementation of Bitcoin, which is the most popular cryptocurrency and which actually worked as the uh, foundation of this concept of bit, bit, uh, blockchain. Uh, so, in case of Bitcoin also, you want to find out that the shared information which is there. Uh, that informations are unaltered and no one is lying about uh, some old transaction. So, there also you can construct a Merkley tree of all the transactions together and if someone is just denying one particular transaction, your Merkley root will change. And by looking into the Merkley root, you will be able to validate that whether the set of transactions have been transmitted from one node to another node in an unaltered way or not. Now, uh, as Bitcoin worked as the foundation behind uh, this uh, widespread popularity of uh, blockchain concept, let us look into the concept of Bitcoin uh, uh, in a, in a, uh, in a bird's eye view. Later on, I will have a detailed discussion about this Bitcoin methodology. So, Bitcoin, uh, it is a complete decentralized peer-to-peer -peer and permissionless cryptocurrency, which was put forth in 2009 in a white paper by Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, in this paper, Bitcoin a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, it was a white paper where uh, Satoshi Nakamoto first uh, proposed the concept of uh, a digital cryptocurrency. Uh, so, the basic philosophy behind uh, this Bitcoin architecture is that, first of all, it is completely decentralized. That means, there cannot be any central party uh, for ordering or recording or controlling your currency just like bank or government. So, that was actually the concept which came from a few mathematicians and the philosopher that why my money will be controlled by a bank 
or a government agency which is a centralized authority. So, I do not want my asset to be controlled by any centralized authority. So, that was a, a, a debatable philosophy. So, we are not going to that particular philosophy, but that philosophy actually give raise to this concept of cryptocurrency and Satoshi Nakamoto through this Bitcoin paper, he has given a um, uh, given a practical implementation of our digital currency or a cryptocurrency, which is completely decentralized where no centralized authority like a bank or a government will have the control over that currency. The second property is the peer to peer, that means the software, the Bitcoin software it runs on the machines of all the stakeholders to form the system. That means you do not have a central system with which all the peers are connected. Rather, you have a complete decentralized system where individual peers are connected with each other and they share the information among themselves. And the third important philosophy behind this Bitcoin idea is that, that it is permissionless. That means it does not have any identity, you do not require any identity to join Bitcoin network. Anyone can join the Bitcoin network and perform a transaction. So, this gives rise to a very important and interesting question that whenever you are allowing multiple parties to join in your network, to join in your financial transaction system, how will you ensure the security of the system? Because the persons who are joining because you are not authenticating them, so they can be malicious or they can perform malicious activity. So, you have to develop a system which will sustain in the presence of such kind of malicious attack. So, that was the interesting concept which was put forward in this Bitcoin architecture. So, just a kind of a statistical information about Bitcoin that in last few years we have seen a lot of interest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. So, it, it is used as a cross country untraceable currency because there is no government control or the centralized control. Um, then uh, the current Bitcoin price I have just recorded in on 15th March 2018 at 10 pm and the value is uh, fluctuating significantly over days. So, if you look it today uh, in Google you will possibly find out something different. So, on that day the currency one Bitcoin was some uh, 8069 dollar, the price was 8069 dollar and if you look into the Bitcoin price increase that it reached on around uh, 20,000 dollar. Uh, in the early of uh, in the last of last year and the uh, uh, first month of uh, this year and then right now we are just observing a dip in the price. And if you look into the blockchain side, the blockchain worked as the backbone of this uh, Bitcoin architecture. So, if you look into the black blockchain size as of December 2017, it is approximately around 149 GB. So, uh, the size of the blockchain is actually growing exponentially. So, if you look into this uh, left side graph, uh, in the left side graph you will see that the growth of this blockchain size which actually stores the information of Bitcoin, uh, it is growing exponentially. So, the technology behind Bitcoin is the blockchain. So, the way I have discussed in the last class about the public ledger, uh, the same thing is applied here. Now, uh, we are storing this transaction information in a block. So, every block contains the transaction information. So, the first block here contains the value that Alice pauses, that means raise 100 with her. Then she makes a transaction of risk 50 to Bob. So, the next block contains that particular transaction. Now, Bob transacts a uh, rupees 30 to Jane. So, that is the uh, third transaction, and all these transactions are connected with each other. Through this concept of hash chain, I will discuss it sometime in later uh, lectures that what is a hash chain. So, the concept that I discussed earlier in the context of digital document that similar kind of architecture where individually individual blocks are connected by a hash value. So, these circles are nothing but a hash value uh, which is connecting the individual blocks together. Uh, so, that way uh, this entire blockchain is coming into practice and the concept of decentralization come into practice that the copy of the blockchain is available to every individual party. So, Alice has her copy of the blockchain, Bob has his copy of the blockchain, Jane has his copy of the blockchain and Eve has her copy of the blockchain. So, every individual parties possess their own copy of the blockchain and whenever there is a transaction, those transactions are get included in the existing blockchain. Now, one notice here that in this example I have shown one transaction in one block, 
but in reality there can be multiple transactions in a single block. Indeed, there can be more than 1000 transactions uh, um, uh, in, in, in a single block. So, uh, let us look into the Bitcoin transaction life cycle whenever Alice want to send some money to Bob, how it actually works. So, initially Alice she opens her Bitcoin wallet and uh, provide the address of Bob and the amount to transfer and send start. So, this is an example Bitcoin wallet. So, Alice uh, gives the address of Bob here and then provides the money to transfer and then he press the send button. So, once he press the send button, then the wallet uh, it constructs um, the transaction. Uh, so, so it makes a transactions like say Alice to Bob of rupees 50 a transaction like that and this transaction is signed using Alice pri private key. So, this concept of signing, so this is the concept of digitally signing a document. So, we call it as digital signature. So, by applying the digital signature technique, so I will discuss the concept of digital signature later on. By applying the digital signature technique, uh, so Alice, uh, so that wallet, it signs the transaction made by Alice and broadcast it over the network. So, as you know that uh, this entire network is a kind of peer to peer network. Everyone is connected to each other through some means. Say this is Alice. Uh, so, Alice wallet it makes or it broadcasts this transaction over the network. So, all the nodes in the network uh, or at least a majority of the nodes in the network uh, receives that particular transaction. Now, this network node they validate the transaction based on the existing blockchain. Now, that is another interesting fact about blockchain. So, uh, so in uh, this slide, we have seen that this blockchain, individual blockchains, they contains the all the transaction records. So, whenever Bob is sending this transaction of rupees 30 to Jane and this information is broadcasted to all the node, so the information also reaches to if that Bob has made a transaction to Jane of uh, rupees 30 and by looking into this blockchain, J if can verify that whether this particular transaction is a valid transaction or not. So, she finds out that well Bob has received raise uh, 50 from uh, Alice. So, currently Bob has raised 50 with him. So, Bob is uh, legitimate to make a transaction of raise 30 to Jane. So, this transaction is a valid transaction. So, that way by looking into the uh, existing blockchain, you can validate whether the transaction is a legitimate transaction or not. Now, once this transaction is validated, then this transaction are propagated to special some special node called miners and the task of the miner is to include the transaction to the, uh, to the next block that will be mined. That means, the task of the miner is collecting all the transactions from the client which was there for say last 10 minutes and their task is to construct a new block and then apply a mechanism called mining. I will discuss the mining mechanism later on. Apply the mechanism of mining to connect that block with the existing blockchain. So, now we are, we are coming to the miners. So, the miner they collect all the transaction um, all the transactions for a time duration say for 10 minutes and the miners they construct a new block and tries to connect it with the existing blockchain through some kind of cryptographic hash computation. So, in a blockchain concept as I have mentioned earlier that every block is connected to the next block through some cryptographic hash function say this is B1 and this is B2. So, B1 is connected to B2 with some hash function. And ideally what is that just to give you an hint that whenever you are computing this hash function for B2, this hash function will contain some parameter along with the hash value which was there for B1. So, that way this B1 it connects uh, the next block B2 and the task of the miner is to solve this hash problem in a 
difficult way. So, this hash problem which is given to the miners, it is a computationally difficult problem and that computationally difficult problem every miner needs to solve. And uh, one of the miner or sometime more than one miner, they solve that problem and they are able to connect that block with the existing blockchain. So, the, this is again I am saying that this is a broad overview of the entire methodology, the details methodology I will uh, discuss later on. This is just a kind of introduction to you about how the whole system works. And once this mining is complete, then uh, the hash is obtained and the block is included in the existing blockchain. And this updated blockchain is propagated in the network. That means, every nodes, every participating node in the network, they receive a copy of this updated blockchain. And once they receive the copy of the updated blockchain, then Bob also receives that copy of the updated blockchain. And once Bob receives that copy of the updated blockchain, so based on by looking into the blockchain, Bob can find out well inside that updated block, there is a transaction from Alice to Bob of say race 30. So, Bob can view this transaction and once Bob is able to view this transaction, Bob can update this value to its uh, to his wallet. So, the current value of uh, Bitcoin that has been transferred from Alice to Bob that gets reflected to the wallet of Bob. So, this transaction gets reflected to Bob and uh, Bob can validate the transaction. So, this way the entire uh, Bitcoin uh, transaction works that whenever Alice wants to make a transaction um, of rupees 30 to Bob and at the backbone the blockchain ensures that um, this particular transaction is a legitimate transaction or it is a valid transaction. So, every individual user or indivi individual uh, node in the network they maintain their local copy of the blockchain. And as you understand that you need a complicated mechanism to ensure that all these local copies which are available to the individual nodes, uh, they are indeed the updated copy or the legitimate copy. So, uh, or that they are the kind of valid copy. So, once every node trusts that well, they have a valid copy of the blockchain and they receives a new transaction. So, they can validate that new transaction against this copy of the blockchain uh, and then uh, the miners, they collect all such transactions uh, which are the valid transaction and the miners also have the capability to check the validity of a transactions. So, once the miner checks the validity of the transaction, then the miner uh, can apply this mining process where they solve a uh, computationally difficult cryptographic problem where their task is to compute a hash function, but not a very simple hash function rather a, a difficult hash function. Uh, and that difficulty level basically governs the um, complexity of the system. Uh, so, once the miner solves that particular hash function, using this hash function the new block is added to the existing block. And that way uh, the blockchain size of the blockchain gradually increases. So, as the transaction comes in new blocks are generated and blocks are added to the blockchain and this updated copy of the blockchain is propagated to all the users. And every user can see that whether there is any transaction which is intended for themselves inside a block. And if there is any transaction which is intended for themselves inside a the block, they can include that transaction in the uh, in their wallet. So, that way the transactions are performed with the help of a blockchain. So, you can see that there is no such centralized authority like a bank which is controlling this entire transaction, rather, this entire transaction is. Uh, controlled in a complete distributed way and there are many nice properties or interesting properties in this mechanism that uh, we will discuss in subsequent classes. So, uh, based on this blockchain concept, blockchain uh, uh, initial concept, there was this concept of blockchain 2, uh, which was uh, based on this Bitcoin uh, revolution. So, the concept of blockchain gradually applied to multiple other sectors uh, like uh, uh, the academia industry and uh, many of the startups, it is termed as blockchain 2. And this concept of blockchain 2 uh, that was extended for another interesting application which is known as smart contract. So, a smart contract is that uh, a smart contract basically provide a decentralized platform uh, 
uh, which can be utilized to avoid uh, the intermediary in a, in a contract. So, when two persons are coming to a contract, we have something like a legal advisory who is basically controlling this kind of contracts. So, there are some kind of middlemen. So, with the help of this kind of blockchain um, environment, you can avoid the intermediaries or the middlemen. So, this concept we known is known as uh, smart contracts. Uh, so, the smart contracts provides a um, faster, cheaper and more secure way for executing the contracts in a uh, decentralized environment. So, in the next class, we will go to the details of these uh, smart contracts in details uh, and uh, we will look into that how you can develop applications using blockchain which will facilitate uh, uh, the use of smart contracts. So, um, we will we'll discuss again during the next class uh, about uh, the smart contract technology by utilizing the blockchain environment. So, thank you.